Hey, what's up? It's Jack, and today I'm just going to cover um, how to deal with corner twists in free blind. Uh, this will mostly be uh, exploring the more advanced side of things, but the first part's also for uh, uh, people sort of newer to free blind, so I um, hope you can uh, benefit from this. So before I dive right into the corner twists, um, I'll be going on the assumption that you memorize the corner twists based on the UD stickers. So for example, my orientation is blue top red front, so I always memorize the blue and uh, green stickers for uh, corner twists. And there are two possible states that the corner twists can be in, so um, they can either be uh, facing the F and B face direction, so um, for example this blue stick is facing the F, fit, the direction of the F face, so I'll refer to them as F B stickers, and they can also be facing the L or R face direction, so I'll call them L R stickers. So now I'm just going to go through some basic outlooks that you need to know. So for example, for this case, uh, what you can do is, in order to get this sticker to like the U face, you can kind of insert it up there like this. And I'm just going to do a U prime sort of interchange that with that. And undo the insertion. And undo the interchange. And if you know commutators, this will seem like really familiar to you. Uh, but you don't, you don't really need to know them in order to learn the point twists. Um, here I can just do that interchange first then um, inserting the sticker to the top by doing that and just undoing them both and I'll solve that case so now I'll just be covering some examples um, when you're dealing with a single twist outside of the buffer um, I'll be using UBL as the buffer piece because that's most likely what you use um, to be around the beginner and intermediate stage so as you probably know um, just like one twist is like impossible on the cube like there has to be at least uh, two corner twists at the minimum and if there's one twist outside your buffer that means the buffer has to be twisted as well. The way in which you can tell quickly which way it's uh, twisted uh, is by just seeing, picking whether it's a possible OLL or not on that face. So uh, this is a possible OLL and this isn't. Um, so it has to be twisted that way. And a way you can solve this is by doing U prime setup to that case we had before. and just U to undo that setup. Or you can do a U2 at the end, uh, same deal. I'm just going to set up another case. Um, so yeah, uh, in your memo, I'm just covering the buffer piece for now. Uh, if you had like uh, this case, like uh, this piece, and you don't know which way the buff is twisted, uh, once again, uh, just think uh, of the possible OLL. So this isn't a possible OLL, but this is. And that's the uh, direction that the buff is twisted. Uh, what you can do for this case is um, you can kind of start as like normal by getting this up to here by doing this. And here you can do a U2 interchange instead to move this over here. Then just undo what you did pretty much. So cases where we have like a corner twist perhaps down here or there. Also I haven't shown uh, which way the EBL piece is twisted just yet, but it is definitely twisted obviously. Uh, what you can do is do a rotation, so like an X prime for instance, and um, in this case, uh, this is an FB sticker. But um, when we rotate or do a setup involving it, obviously the kind of sticker that matters, like I guess the new UD sticker, is like the orange sticker in this case. Um, a quick way to determine the orientation of it is by switching the status of the sticker. So what I mean by that is this is an FB sticker right now. Rotating it would change it to an LR sticker. And as you can see, um, the orange sticker is facing the right direction. Literally, the right direction. So uh, yeah, uh, in this case, uh, how to determine the buffer sticker is by just determining uh, if it's a possible OLL or not. So this isn't, and this is, so it has to be facing that way. And yeah, what you can do is like do a setup to something we've um, encountered before. So like this, for instance, and you can do this for an FB sticker. Uh, so in this case we have a piece down here, um, the twist facing that way, and it's kind of in the opposite side of uh, our buffer piece here, so what we can do is do an R move. Uh, so right now um, it's an LR sticker, and by doing a setup or any kind of rotation affecting the piece, it changes status to an FB sticker. So we now know this is an FB sticker, so it's like facing that way, and like a possible OLL in this case uh, would be having this piece twisted so it's facing that way. and 
yeah, you can just kind of do the L that the L that I showed before. Oh, and uh, undo set up that uh, yeah, for advanced solvers or solvers that use free style, um, I just recommend that uh, you just memorize a uh, twist style for every case. Um, that's like really good because they twist kind of come up often, so you might as well learn like a really fast style for them. So, um, for example, this case would just be that. Oh, well, a really bad example. Um, if you get a case like um, this, where you have like I guess a lone target at the end and a twist, um, what I recommend that instead of doing just like the parody out and like a twist out for instance. Um, what I recommend you do, um, this is what I always do when I get a case like this, LTC TSI. Break into the twist, so uh, in this case I can do the arc for a BG. Um, I recommend just starting off by just breaking into the UD sticker, because um, it takes the least amount of, I guess, effort to think about. Later on you can probably try to break and force better comps, but it's not too important, most likely, for now. And just do the parody arc. Because I think generally on average, doing a com plus parody is faster than doing a parody plus a twist. So for cases where um, there's a two twist um, outside of the buffer, um, first of all, we'll just make sure that uh, it's a possible OLO case. So in this case, uh, it is because if you change, if you rotate, you change the like LR stickers and that's a possible OLO case in the white face. So if it's a case like that where the buffer is solved, then uh, you can either do something similar to um, what I showed earlier on, so maybe rotating or setting up and doing something like this. But um, another option is to um, just simply set up um, or just rotate one of the pieces to the UFR spot and just do the, uh, the UFR um, plus one twist out. So when I'm dealing with twists on the bottom face, uh, what you can do is uh, this instead. and the inverse, which is doing the uh, D first in this case. And yeah, just variations of that and the U-face algs and um, rotations, and that's like how you can deal with a lot of uh, corner twist cases. If you get a case that isn't like a possible OLO, for example, like that, um, in order to determine the direction the buff is twisted, um, yeah, you, once again, you can do the same trick. So by rotating, uh, this FB sticker changes to LR, same for the LR sticker, which changes to an FB sticker, which is how you can tell um, the direction of the uh, red stickers without looking. And yeah, in order to kind of make this an OLO, including this piece, I uh, have to turn it into that. But for these cases, I've just kind of pre-memorized like a sequence of uh, two columns that solve these types of cases. So I guess it's not really important to figure out the orientation of the buffer. Uh, so for this case, I just know that if I do uh, these two commutators, then it will solve that case. Um, I think there's an intuitive way to figure those out, but I never really bothered uh, going through that. I just kind of pre-memorized a sequence of two comps to solve like all those cases, and I think it works fine. So for cases with uh, multiple twists like this one, uh, what I like to do is um, pair twists off. So what I mean by, by that is, uh, for instance, uh, like one of the first things I'd see are these two twists at the uh, front bottom here. And oh yeah, I know that um, this would kind of be like an OLL on the green face. Um, so I kind of like paired them off. So I don't have to worry about these anymore. I just noticed a twist, these two twists here. And yeah, another one I noticed, um, just keep in mind that I don't, uh, I don't know the buffer uh, orientation yet, uh, are these two. And I know that's an OLL case as well. Um, so I kind of pair uh, these two pairs off, I guess, so I'm not worrying about these anymore, and there's another twist here, and it's a lone twist. And uh, yeah, I just know there's a single twist left, so um, I can just do the UFR um, twist alg for this case. See, so, yeah, I don't think the order of them really matters, but um, I'll just do the order in which I fought them through, so I'll do with these two first. Then these two. And then just the UFR um, twist out. So yeah, that's about it. Uh, I guess for a lot of stuff, uh, it comes down to a lot of uh, experimentation because I guess the methods I sort of taught in this tutorial are a bit more, uh, I guess, on the intuitive side. So um, things might not make sense like straight away, but I think if you explore your techniques and play around with stuff, um, I think you'll be able to figure out how things work and all that. 
And uh, yeah, once again, if you knew how commutators work, then things might make a bit more sense. But um, that's it for this, and um, see ya.